good exposure in your photograph is only just the beginning for that photograph. It's also the composition that needs to be right too. What I want to do in this tutorial is take you through several steps to help you see how I see the world and help you hopefully to improve what it is you're doing for yourselves. So let's get started. The rule of thirds has been used by artists for millennia to help them with a composition within their paintings and of course photographers are now using it to their own advantage to create interesting and striking images. If you look just for example how this is broken up there's one, two, almost two thirds of land here and then one third sky. Down here there's another third and another third here and then a third down here. Where the crosshairs meet here, here, here and here is where you put a point of interest. In this particular case my tripod is sat on this third here. The camera is on the crosshair around there. Here there's a red building which is adding another point of interest. What am I doing with my own picture? I'll just show you the back of my camera. You'll see on the back of my camera that what I'm doing is using a third of sea, a third of what's left of the land, and then almost, I guess, two-thirds sky. Here is sat the red building, which is my point of interest, where the crosshair is. You will notice on my own camera here, there's a diagonal here and a diagonal going down here. I'll explain more about diagonals later on. But for now, what I'm doing is, as I explained, I had the red building on the third here and then what I've been doing is waiting for the waves to come in strong enough and then create a nice kind of breakup of, of this, the ocean here. As otherwise, it's a little bit too boring. So I've captured with a fast shutter speed some of the breaking waves here, just below the red building. That's how I would use the rule of thirds on this particular image. We've heard how the rule of thirds is a good way to start to compose our images, but there's other things that we can add into our images that help balance out the images a lot more, help us go into the image. When I say go into the image, I'm talking about leading lines. What are leading lines? Lines within the landscape or cityscape that will help you go into the image, such as a road, such as a vineyard, all these types of things, even telegraph lines that are coming down from the top corner of, a of an image going down into the picture will help lead your eye into the image and give you more dimension to that image. Here I'm stood in Norway and what I've got at the moment is a really nice curved bridge that's going from one uh, from the bottom of the image right up into the image. It's curving round and it's helping to to lead you into the image. So I'll just show you the back of my camera so you can see what it is that I'm talking about with this particular leading line and how it's helping to lead your eye from the bottom of the image into the image itself. This is the leading line that I was talking about, the road, the bridge that goes up here and across here. Now on my final image, there's a third here and this is where the road is starting. It then leads up here and then it goes round and circles around ending up on the third, on the top third there. So it's I think ending somewhere around there as it curves around. Your eye follows the road, it goes across there and you go into the picture. A classic leading line, it's not an S curve, we'll cover those in another segment, but as I said you can see if you watch this you follow around and there you go, there's your, your leading line. If I turn on my camera you should be able to see the final image that I did here. So if I even turn on live view it might be a bit better as well. If I can just get in here you can see that I've put the, the top part here and it then curves around off the edge of the third here but then goes back round and it then finishes on the third here. So I'm using, if I get the focus back again, I'm using the bottom third here to go around to end up on the top third for a really nice balanced and composed image. That's how you use leading lines in landscape photography or cityscape photography if that's what you want to do as well.
We've looked at the rule of thirds and we've looked at leading lines. Well, how about colour? Now you might be thinking, colour, what's that got to do with composition? Well, I feel that when you're looking at colours within the landscape, that sometimes if you add in striking colours against another colour, then it really helps to draw in the eye and draw in the viewer. So I found a scene here in Norway whereby we've got a red boathouse, I think it's a boathouse, against a very bluish backdrop because it's very cold out here at the moment. And so those two elements combined help to draw the viewer in, help them to look at the image and go, what is it that's in this place? Is it as cold as it looks? What is it about? So the eye is drawn in. Another compositional aid to draw your eye in, not just leading lines that draw you in, but the colour as well. Let me explain. Take a look at the composition here, even just with the GoPro as I'm filming. You have this red boathouse here. My tripod is on another third there. On the top third here is the sky and the mountains. So this red house here, this red boathouse I guess, it adds a striking element against the blue. There's a little bit of blue in the sky but also the cold feeling here. Those two elements combined help to create an image that is as cold as it looks and helps to draw the viewer's eye in because you have this striking red boathouse here against the blue sky and the very cold environment. That's what you want in composition. You want people to be drawn in. You want people to be looking at your images and going, wow, that looks so cold and stark, but, but beautiful. And I want to go there. And I look at this, I saw this scene and I thought that's a perfect scene to illustrate colour in the landscape. Diagonals are an extremely important compositional tool within our images. Yes, you might be able to use the rule of thirds, leading lines, put colour in, all these different types of things, but also diagonals can play an important role too. Here in the mountains of Norway, there's acres of diagonals, such as obviously the mountains coming down. But also, if you're thinking, what else can you do? Where else are diagonals? If you use a drone, for example, like in a tutorial I did last year on drone photography, you'll see that I did a top-down view of an orchard in the Loire Valley to create a striking image whereby I just filled the frame with the lines of the orchard. So let me show you the scene behind me that I've been passing every single day and you should be able to see what it is that I'm talking about when it comes to diagonals. If you look at the back of my camera, you'll see how I've used the diagonals down there with a long lens to compress the perspective. Just coming down here, coming down here, and you'll notice here, actually, that this mountain is coming down on the diagonal from corner to corner. So there's this perceived diagonal going down here. They're all following, they're all following the other way as well, and they're helping to create a more interesting image to the viewer. And that's always what we want. We want to be able to create images that people look at time and time again. There's even a very subtle diagonal, which is the end of the road, which is just coming down through there and then going off behind the mountain. So that's how we can use diagonals in our images to create images people want to look at over and over again. Motion blur is another effective tool that we can use to compose our images. Now you might be thinking, well that's more that's to do with exposure. Well yes it is, but of course helping to pan the camera through an image and create more dynamic images is something that again will catch the eye, which again leads back to composition, what it does for me. Anyway, when I was in Shinjuku last year in April 2019, I wanted to get a panned shot of a car or taxi going through the cityscape of Shinjuku, creating a more dynamic image and another image that would basically draw people's eye in. And of course, doing stock photography, I wanted to create an image that people would look at and they would buy because basically it would give the impression of motion, it would give the impression that somebody is maybe in a hurry for an appointment, going to the airport, something like that. So that's how we can use motion blur to effectively draw in our viewer's eyes yet again.
The next tip that I want to give you is to say to you, put the horizon in the middle. You might be thinking, what on earth are you talking about? You've been banging on about diagonals and the, the rule of thirds, etc. But sometimes if you have a subject such as a really nice still lake, you can actually create nice kind of abstract images when you're looking across that lake. You can pick out details on the other side. Don't do a wide angle shot, do more telephoto type of shot and you can create those more abstract type images if you have that crystal clear and very still lake. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't find he anything here in Norway, so I'll show you some of the images as I'm talking from my path portfolio so you can see what it is that I'm talking about, where I've zoomed in and then basically tried to create a more abstract type of image with a horizon in the middle. So don't discount it at times. That horizon in the middle can actually work to create a nice, good, solid composition. The last tip that I want to give you is to completely ignore the rules. And you might be thinking, well, surely there's some magic formula that you're not telling us about. Surely there's some magical tip to compose our images, to get them award-winning images or whatever. Well, no, you know, sometimes at times you have to just throw the rules out of the window and you will get great images. Sometimes things just happen and things just work as they are. If you've enjoyed what you've seen during this tutorial, then don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. And then you can also find me on places such as Instagram under Julian Elliott Photography, as well as over on Facebook under Julian Elliott Photography. Just tap that in and then you'll find me. Thank you so much to all of my old and hopefully new subscribers. Hope you've enjoyed this. There'll be another vlog very soon. Not sure where it'll be from. In any case, take care of yourselves. See you all again soon and thank you so much for watching. Bye.